Hi friends, welcome to A to Z Learning Channel. Today our video is about a stock that is in most retail investors' mind. That name of the stock is Orbindo Pharma. Orbindo Pharma used to trade over 1,000 rupees, and now it is down to, as per today's market, it was down to 712. So it has gone down quite substantially. And in this video, we will help you understand whether Orbindo Pharma is an entry opportunity, an entry opportunity for people to invest, or if they're already invested, is this an opportunity for them to further accumulate, or is it some sort of trap which is going to spoil, ruin people's investment, people's hard-earned money. So in this video, we'll help you understand all the details that are relevant uh, in terms of helping you make the decision whether Orbindo Pharma remains a good investment option for you or is it time for you to consolidate losses and get out of it? Just before I start my video, let me kind of clarify one, one point. The data that I'm using, some of the kind of uh, references, market references uh, I'm using in this video, the source for that is the Economic Times Wealth Supplement, which, uh, which is for September this year only. So this week's uh, Wealth Supplement is what I'm using to quote some of the data that I'll be using in this video. So without any further delay, let's commence our video. So as I said, the focus is on Orbindo Pharma to help you understand whether it's an opportunity for you to invest or is it a trap that you must avoid. So let's first understand the key facts. One fact I've already talked about, which was um, that this stock uh, has got a 52 week high of 1064. It's currently trading at 712. So the hard fact is that the stock price has already corrected for over 30%. When I look at the performance of Orbindo stock, say middle of September 2020 to middle of September 2021, and this is before the correction that we have seen um, today in, in this stock, um, I noticed that the stock was overall down 10% in these last 12 months. Whereas pharma index, if I look at pharma uh, group of companies uh, as a whole, are up 23%. And if I look at say Sensex as a broader benchmark, that's up 50% in, in these 12 months starting from middle of September last year to now. So that says quite a lot that while in general terms, the market is up, overall index is up, overall pharma as an industry is doing well and the stock prices are up for pharma index too. Uh, the key thing is Orbindo Pharma as against all those positive that the industry is seeing, as against the, all the positive that the broader index is seeing, Orbindo Pharma saw a negative equity of 10%, and I think it is down another 2 to 2.5% today. So I would say about 12, 12.5% down over the course of last 12 months. So that's a kind of hard fact. So stock hasn't performed is the reality. What is the other hard fact that you need to keep in mind that when I look at their quarterly revenue, quarter on quarter for last three quarter, it is going down. It is going down continuously. It used to be more than say 6,300 crore a quarter revenue. Now it's down to more like 5,700 quarters based on the June and quarters number. So that's worrying. Net profits is a similar story there. It's also showing a declining trend quarter on quarter for last two quarters. They had very good profits in the December quarter, but then March quarter uh, of 21 and then June 21 quarter, both quarters, the profits have gone down and it's a declining trend is, is the worrying factor. And above all, the third piece to kind of refer in terms of the hard fact that you need to note before we help you understand what is going on 
in this company is the US FDA, which is the uh, Food and Drug Authority, uh, Federal Drug Authority in the US. Um, it, they kind of sent a warning letter for the non-compliance of the set out norms in their manufacturing facility in New Jersey. And that was another nail in their sort of overall bad performance. So these are the sort of facts which uh, you already would have known, but I've summarized it so that it's summarized at one place for you that what is happening around this stock? What is the news around this particular stock? Now let's understand one by one um, what, let's understand the uh, company's exposure. Let's assess the uh, company's exposure to all these facts. So let's first of all kind of deal with the US FDA. So let me first start with this manufacturing facility in New Jersey that is in the question, that is the issue where warning letter was issued by US FDA contributes to 2% of the group revenue. So it's an important facility. And it, it, whenever there is a non-compliance issue with the regulatory requirement, uh, it's always a bad news. But because, uh, but we need to kind of keep this in the context of the overall company, that the manufacturing facility, which is, uh, which is kind of uh, the issue here, is, is con contributes only 2% of the group revenue. And, and one other thing I would talk about is that the Orbindo Pharma is in the business from what, uh, late 80s. Um, and, and for pharma companies, it's a very routine fact that they do get these sort of kind of warning letters from um, uh, Federal Drug Authority from time to time. It's a, it's a kind of ongoing practice for uh, authorities to keep questioning so that their standards keep going up. And it's important for uh, pharma companies like Orvindo to kind of take note of those regulatory gaps, regulatory non-compliances, and then respond very, very strongly by complying with all those, all those required requirements. So it's a, it's a routine uh, thing. The other thing is, so therefore, Orbindo Pharma is, is well aware, well versed with the, uh, with these sort of kind of warning letters and how best to kind of respond to that. The other piece I would talk about is that Orbindo Pharma is a global generic uh, uh, pharma company and they've got a very good ecosystem and which is vertically integrated. So therefore, the fact that all other manufacturing facilities are, are in a good position, they know how to kind of comply even for New Jersey manufacturing facility. Sometimes some of these warning letters could be um, an admin error where some of the things that were supposed to be shown to the authorities were not shown or reported in a timely manner and therefore it could be it could be a gap, but I'm not saying that the New Jersey is, is just a false alarm. No, not at all. Um, but all I'm trying to emphasize is that the Orbindo's experience, the, the generic ecosystem that they have built, the vertically integrated ecosystem that they have built over the years, uh, and their experience in terms of dealing with such kind of warning from FDA in the past, I would say that I feel reasonably confident that it's a routine warning which will be responded and all these will be cleared fairly soon by, by Orbindo Pharma. Then the next question comes is that um, uh, what's happening to the revenue? There is a, there is a big kind of focus um, going on in terms of um, Orbindo Pharma. They have, uh, lately focused on the inorganic growth. What they have done is uh, uh, they have, um, they, they are very, very aggressive in terms of growing themselves by acquiring uh, uh, portfolios. Uh, so what they have done recently is they have invested about $104 million to acquire a portfolio of six ANDAs. ANDAs are basically the abbreviated uh, uh, 
drug applications uh, that companies new drug applications so every generic company kind of files with the regulators uh, for a new drug um, application and if it's once it's approved then they get um, exclusive period to sell their generic product as an alternative to the core kind of patented product so they've got six of those uh, that they have acquired they've also acquired nine otc products um, uh, as part of this 100 million dollar investment so all that is going to help them uh, improve their revenue and therefore their profitability position what else will uh, could help uh, if i look at in the india context the production link incentive scheme and this whole china plus one strategy that most western companies are following they both are going to help a company like orbindo pharma to accelerate their future growth so overall i feel the declining trend that we are seeing uh, for both revenue and profits with orbindo pharma it's a matter of time maybe one more quarter of pain and then it will start to show the growth it will start to show revenue profits going up again and that leaves us with the last kind of point that i want to make is that uh, with the steep uh, correction that we have seen in the stock price the p for the stock price over the earning uh, for uh, for orbindo is now at 8.3 times level which is very very low if i compare with some of the other companies like cadilla your lupin your cipla your alchem they all are trading at a p ratio of more than 25 so some have got as high as even 30 uh, p ratio so when you look at in the context of the competitors a, a p ratio of 8.3 does uh promise does offer an upside in the in the near future and this is also kind of validated by independent analyst the analyst community kind of from time to time look at the fundamentals valuation the product pipeline and the future growth in that context when i look at um, uh, your uh, key brokers uh, for example hdfc research credit swiss motilal oswal mk uh, or the centrum broken they all um, are recommending they are all kind of saying that they are, they are placing a buy rating with a very strong target of uh, of say 900 950 or maybe 1150 also uh, when i look at the going back to that analyst point that i was making uh, there is a there is a broader consensus that uh, uh that analyst community is placing uh, 80% of the analyst um, community is placing a buy rating a strong buy rating on this stock so so i i guess no individual factor and there is no crystal ball that any one of us can see and predict what will be the future for orbindo pharma uh, stock price but looking at all these things uh, for example fda issue that's going on with their manufacturing facility seems to me a routine matter which this company is quite capable of responding to valuation of the company is very low analyst community is very upbeat and the recent inorganic acquisition of few anders as well as the um, otc products by the company and investment of 100 million us dollar i feel that the revenue and profit is is uh, improvement is just around the corner as i said earlier so so i feel more confident about the future of orbinda pharma i feel that the worst is over for this company and with today's correction this is definitely for me a a great entry opportunity so i'll be personally kind of taking exposure in this particular stock but you should take your own decision all the data point that i've quoted in this video today are from the economic times so it's independent source uh, i'm just trying to kind of help you understand and interpret those numbers in this video you must consult your own independent advisor before you make any position on orbindo pharma uh, stock um, my uh, video is just to kind of help you 
understand the information which is already available in the public domain. So I hope this video has been helpful for you to demystify and better understand what all is going on around the Orbindo Pharma. I, my only request uh, from you is that, first of all, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, and if you've liked our video, then please uh, press the like button and share it with your friends and family. And last but not least, if you've not subscribed our channel, A to Z Learning as yet, please do subscribe and become part of our viewers community. Thank you so much and good luck with your investment decisions.